Okay friends, welcome to this class of plate tectonics. So, so far we have discussed about the mineralization events at the convergent margin, the divergent margins and the collisional margins. In today's class, we are going to discuss the mineralization system at the intraplate environment. So, that means it is away from the active tectonic front. So, within that continental interior, so that is why called it is intraplate metallogenic system. So, now the question arises why this intraplate tectonic system or intraplate mineralization occurs. If you remember our earlier class, when we are talking about this rifting system, we started with a mantle plume. And once the mantle plume is approaching towards the base of this crust or this lithosphere, it is increasing the heat. And due to the increase of heat, it is melting part of this base of this crust and this lithospheric base. So, finally, the magma which is generated, this magma is coming out and it is spreading on the surface that is called igneous province. And uh, this type of environment, they are common in different geological environment that means in space and time. And these are responsible for magmatic or you can say this uh, orthomagmatic mineralization. So, when we are talking about magma and crystallization, every time it comes in our mind that the Bowen's reaction series, how it is happening. That means, whenever the Bowen's reaction series we study, we start with olivine and this is calcic plagioclase. So, these are the silicates. So, before the silicate crystallization, this mineralization or the metallogenesis happens and this is the in the sulphide environment, sulphide rich environment. So, in this class, we will talk about what is this characteristics of this intraplate magmatism and what type of mineral we are expecting from this intraplate magmatism and what is the prerequisite and which type of geological environment are suitable for this intraplate magmatism as well as mineralization. Simply magmatism, if it is there, it may not of mineralized. So, that means magmatism would be there and this magma would be mineralized and particularly rich in metals. So, that type of geological environment, which type of environment is suitable for that geological environment and geochemical environment we will discuss in this present day class. So, this particularly when we are talking about this mantle plume or this continental interior magmatism. This is the orthomagmatic nickel, copper and platinum group of element. These minerals, they are the most dominant mineralization or metallogenesis in this type of system. So, this mantle plume is responsible for this magmatism. If you see in this diagram, so this mantle plume is rising and finally, it is reaching near to this crust and you can see there are number of pathways through which this magma is distributed and it is erupting to the surface. So, just you can say this vertical pipes, it is called conolith and if it is sheet like, it is called dike and if it is like this, that means concordant structure that is called seal. So, that means we have different seals, different dikes, different of conoliths. So, through which this magma which is generating from this mantle plume is redistributed among these different crustal levels and at the top of this surface. And this type of magma spreading on the surface, it is called large igneous province or it is in the other word in the short form it is called LIP. Large igneous province, these are very good reservoir of energy and metals. And it is very important contributor to this metallogenic system or this metal extraction. And in this figure, if you see, this is the global distribution of this large igneous province. And in the Indian context, if you see here, we have 
the Deccan basalt, it is the continental magmatism flood basalt is there. So, in the ocean surface also uh, we have different large igneous that means bodies are there in the submerged. So, these are called large igneous province or LIPs. So, many of this intraplate setting that give rise intra cratonic basins are considered to be very part of this divergent tectonic system. So, those divergent tectonic system which is later formed and it starts with this magmatic system. So, there will be stretching, there will be magmatism and there will be rifting and finally, it will be converted to drifting stage. So, from rifting to drifting that means we are creating two separate plates, but until unless the plates are separated, the blocks are separated, we have an intact plate. So, within that we are allowing this magma to rise through this different conduits and it is spreading on the surface. So, we are saying it is the large igneous province. Mostly some types of uranium systems and salt lake deposits, there is also few intraplate mineralization. Apart from this nickel, copper and PG deposit, we have uranium system, we have salt deposit. Salt deposit is very important source for many minerals and this orthomagmatic nickel copper PG deposit already we have discussed and magma emplaced at this large igneous province provide direct information about the elemental distribution at the subsurface because magma generating from different level, they are taking different elements through it. We do not know what exactly this elemental distribution, what is the fashion of distribution from top to bottom. So, once this magma is coming to the surface, it is giving the direct evidences that what are the exactly this elements they are distributed, what is the compositional stratigraphy of this particular region. And this large quantity of nickel copper PG are being extracted from the depth and they are deposited at the deeper crust and those deeper crust deposits they are coming to the surface due to crustal exhumation. So, crustal exhumation is one of this tectonic process that we know this, this system is going down at part of the crust which is subsiding and later it is coming to this near to the surface this is process is called exhumation. So, when the deep crustal rocks, the crust rocks that were formed at the deep crust when they are coming to the surface, this process is called exhumation. So, this nickel copper PG deposits once upon the geological past, they were formed in somewhat deeper level and due to this crustal exhumation, they are coming to the surface. But though they are amplished away from this crustal margin, in many cases, these deposits are located near the edge of the cratonic block. Why this edge of the cratonic block? Because these are the environment which is providing the easy passage to the magma to this mid crust. So, these crustal boundaries, they are the weak zones. So, those weak zones, they are this magma is taking this advantage to emplace itself near to the surface. And we know during this uh, decompressional melting, there are different types of melting processes is involved here and this is the decompressional melting which is responsible for stretching and another type of melting that is the increase of temperature and third type of melting it is due to uh, that means induction of some uh, water that is what that is volatiles due to the subducting of the slab there are three types of melting is there. But here we are talking about the decompressional melting by stretching the lithosphere and the fluid flux from dehydration of the subducting slab uh, that produce mental plume, enormous volume of mafic magma giving rise to LIP. So, any of this region may be responsible for this magma generation and once this magma generation is there, magma is coming out and spreading on the surface or near surface, it is near surface emplacement, we are saying it is the large igneous province irrespective of it a region. So, large volume of mafic magma that is generated through partial melting, once it ascends the crust via interconnected, interconnected network of seals, dikes and conoliths. And those seals and dikes and conoliths, they can travel up to 2000 kilometer. So, that means, these pathway are capable moving the melt vertically over 2000 kilometer and laterally around 200 kilometers or so. 
So that means simply seals and dikes, they are nothing that means they are not restricted to this near to this igneous body. They can transport the magma about thousands kilometer or even hundreds of kilometer. So that is why magmatic emplacement one particular place that does not mean the mineralization will occur here only. So, through this distributary channels, the magma may be emplaced thousands of kilometer away from its actual emplacement and that can be responsible for mineralization. And addition to that, these seals and dike when they are intruding into this host rock, they are altering the rock, they are leaching the rock and they metamorphizing this rock. So, finally, what is happening? This is related to metamorphism, the mineralization related to leaching, related to alteration, whatever the mineralizations are there, they are also taking place here. And this magma or the basaltic magma particularly, when it is emplaced near to the surface, it is called flood basalt like the Deccan, it is one of this Indian example, that is Deccan flood basalt or you can say this Deccan traps. So, same thing it has been written here, that the seals are capable of transporting magma laterally about hundreds of kilometers and this different crustal level. So, if you see this diagram here, these are the seals which are parallel to the surface at a different level they are emplaced. So, this is giving rise the large igneous province. And this magmic magmas that leaves the mantle that ascend through different crustal generation that enriched in nickel, copper and PG and which is favorable geochemical and geological conditions are required to concentrate those elements together to giving rice deposit. So, what are this suitable environment or geochemical environment or geological environment responsible for this system that comes under this economic geology class when this magma it is giving rise to mineralization, what are the different processes, what are the different geochemical changes that is occurring, how this magma is contaminating, how it is fractionating. So, this comes under this say, economic geology class. So, we will not discuss much about this. But such deposits form high flux magma system that developed by self organization of flow within that magma pathways. And sulphide minerals typically accumulate in mafic and ultramafic igneous rocks in such magmas and through such conduits. Now, nickel, copper and PG sulphide mineralization forms if what is these conditions? First is the magma reaches sulphur saturation triggered either by contamination of a sulphur bearing crustal rock or by sudden change in magma chemistry. So, now we need this sulphur inside so that sulphide mineralization will occur. So, for sulphur what it should be the source? Either it is the host rock which is putting that means the clusters are putting within that uh, the magma system it is contaminating the magma. So, that may be one source for sulphur. Another is the magma chemistry changes due to fractionation. So, that that sulphur may increase. So, either of these cases we are increasing sulphur it is the first condition. Second condition is that the resulting sulphide droplets can scavenge nickel, copper and PG from this large volume of magma. Once this droplet is forming, this is the um, that means the sulphide droplets are forming. So, they are attracting this nickel, copper and PG from this rest of this magma and they are concentrating within that. The third is the sulphide droplets aggregate and are transported and deposited for a coherent over body. So, those which are concentrated in terms of nickel, copper and PG due to the attraction from the different sides of this magma. So, they are concentrated and they are moving up and finally, somewhere they are emplaced due to this magma cooling and giving rise these deposits. Now, another type of deposit which is mostly deposit hosted by intracartonic basins. So, we are talking about large igneous province that means this mineralization or metallogenesis within this magma and now we are talking about if there is any intracartonic basins how it will be mineralized because we are talking about this intraplate mineralization system. Mostly this sandstone hosted uranium deposit, it is most eye catching deposit that is the epigenetic deposit and which uranium minerals are present as a disseminations and replacement primarily in fluvial lacustrine and deltaic sandstones. 
So now, what is the essential condition? We need a sandstone and we need some fluvial that will either it is fluvial sandstone or lacustrine or deltaic sandstone it is there. So, some other condition also required we will discuss in later times how the sandstone is enriched in uranium with time. So, uranium is precipitated under reducing condition. So, that means we need a reducing environment and caused by one or more reducing agents. So, what are the reducing agent? So, within that sandstone including the carbonaceous material, if this carbonaceous material is there that means we have organic material that can create a reducing environment. Then sulphides, sulphide is there that is provide the reducing environment. Then hydrocarbon if it is there, sandstone is oil bearing or hydrocarbon bearing that will create a reducing environment. Then it is interbedded with Fe2 rich volcanic rock that is few minutes back we are talking about the seals. Suppose it is interbedded with seals, so which is a volcanic rock, so Fe2 rich. So these are these conditions, they are providing a reducing environment and within that reducing environment we have a sandstone and that sandstone is allowing the uranium to precipitate there and giving rise the sandstone hosted uranium deposit and most basins that host these deposits form on stable cratons that were close to the sea which produces local reducing conditions during and after sedimentation forming chemical trap that is essential for uranium precipitation. So that means we are producing an reducing environment after deposition so that that means this basin is now fit to attract the uranium to precipitate within that. And there are 5 important prerequisites for this uranium mineralization within the sandstone. What are the prerequisites? First is the formation after the oxidation of the atmosphere and hydrosphere. Second thing that a leachable uranium source should be there. Uranium source should be there which is leachable otherwise how can you concentrate the uranium? The third is the presence of a stable permeable aquifer and stable aquiclude that means they can create a reducing environment. A stable groundwater system to form an upstream oxidized zone, the upper part should be oxidized and the lower part should be reduced. A reduction front where the uranium is precipitated and concentrated. So now if you see this diagrams, we have oxygenated sandstone that is yellow color you see and we have reducing environment here and this is the reduced sandstone, this is the reduced sandstone, this grey color and whatever you are getting here, this is nothing, these red colors are the uranium deposits. So that means we have uranium at the front which is separating the reducing environment to oxidized environment. So that means oxidized environment at the top and the reducing environment at the bottom and from this oxidized environment the either it is granite or any rock, it should be leachable through this that means uh, through solution that this uranium it is leaching down through solution and once it is reaching to a reducing condition due to the change of the HPH condition, the uranium is precipitated there. So this sandstone is this region, this region, this region, they are rich in uranium. Similarly, if you see this groundwater is flowing here and this groundwater once it is flowing that means it is oxidized. So, it is reaching in an environment which is reducing environment. So, that is why you can say at the periphery where this groundwater is mixing with another environment with another fluid which of different pH condition. So, at this periphery we are getting this uranium deposits. So, this is the chemical front this red dots this is called the chemical front that means mixing of two solutions are there. Then surficial uranium deposit that is mostly it is young, paleogene or recent, near surface concentration of sediments or soil and mostly it is calcrete hosted, calcrete hosted uranium deposit that the most significant of this kind and uranium is leached from the source rock transported by oxidized surface water at the shallow ground water and when it is reaching at the reducing environment it is giving rise this uh, uranium deposit. So, calcrete you know there are different uh, terminologies used for these concretions. There is calcrete, silcrete, ferricrete. If it is calcium carbonate, it is called calcrete. 
if it is silica it is silicrate, it is iron it is called ferricrate. So, different concretions are of a different shape they are. So, another is the vanadium is extracted from this mafic rock. So, that means there will be vanadium deposit. So, that is extracted from mafic rock or iron rich meta sediment. So, third thing is that we have this carnotite. Carnotite is nothing, it is the evaporite. So, evaporation of the surface or groundwater triggers precipitation of carnotite. It is hydrated uranium and K bearing vanadate. It is chemical formula is here. And the vicinity of plyolex, this precipitation of carnotite can occur due to mixing of valley groundwater along with the more saline lake water. So, now you see everywhere there is a change of salinity, there is a change in uh, pH is condition where this mineralization is going on. So, either it is a salinity change, it is a chemical change of these fluids when they are mixing together that front that is the uh, reaction front which is giving rise to mineralization. Then another deposit is called salt lake deposit. Salt lake itself the name is self explanatory. We have salt deposit and in the lake. So, that means mostly this playas where this evaporation is more in flow. So, the salt lakes their major source for lithium, potash, borate and other strategic mineral. So, lithium nowadays very recently the Indian government has declared we got a uh, lithium deposit in Jammu and Kashmir. So, these are very rich that means it is salt lakes if it is there ancient salt deposit if you can identify. So, that is very rich in this type of mineral systems. So, salt lakes that is otherwise it is called salars that is the semi arid to arid regions of Chile, Peru, Argentina and Bolivia contain most of the world's low cost supply of lithium. Whereas, salt lakes in Jordan, Israel, China they are significant source of potash. But there are certain preconditions how this salt will be precipitated there and how it will be rich in minerals. That precondition says much inflow to form water body with no or restricted outflow. Only inflow is there, only receiving end is there, no giving end. So, evaporation must exceed inflow. Then fluid source may be surficial or it is hydrothermal. So, any of this fluid flow, fluid flow path or any of the fluid, but the main requisite is that, that it should contain salt. So, we are precipitating salt, we are accumulating salt from the surrounding either there are some fracture may be some hydrothermal fluid may be mixing here. So, anyhow we are increasing the system with salt with evaporation of water only and salt remain there. So, this is evaporite conditions. Then all those deposits whatever they are so far we have discussed what is their exploration implication how this can be explored. These triggers drivers and the mineralizing events and the chemical composition of this ore fluid. Depositional mechanisms evolved in different tectonic systems and different stage of individual tectonic system have fundamental difference in properties. So, the triggers which triggering the mineralization it has the difference. The drivers of a mineralizing event that is also differences. The chemical composition is also different. The depositional mechanism it is also different. The depositional front is different that means the host rock it is also different, but irrespective of all those differences. So, we are getting the minerals. So, now there is something else which is working behind that is the geochemistry. So, the geochemistry is very much important in terms of mineralization. So, as many types of mineral deposit form as a consequence of geodynamic processes that occur at different tectonic systems individual type of mineral deposit in most cases are not diagnostic of tectonic system. Because if you remember our earlier classes, we are talking about VMS deposit both in divergent and convergent margins. We are talking about the porphyry deposit both at uh, convergent and divergent system. So, talking about one particular mineral type we say it is a particular geological environment 
it is particular geological environment is responsible for its formation, it is not okay. So, that is why we have to take a mineral assemblage rather a particular deposit. So, that is why assemblage of deposit it is important. So, for example, assemblage type produces within one metallogenic system can be strongly indicative of tectonic system which they are formed. So, rather one particular mineral assemblage of mineral is very much important to detect which type of tectonic setting is responsible or was responsible for its formation. Many of these chemical characteristics of ore fluid appears to depend to a significant degree upon the stages of tectonic metallogenic systems in which they form. For example, at high heat flow and extreme mafic and magmatic magmatism through all evolutionary stages of this convergent system and the rift stages of divergent system produce high temperature and relatively reduced and ore fluid associated with the porphyry, copper, VMS, siliciclastic, mafic, ZN and, and PB deposits. So, that means you see starting from high temperature to low temperature, divergent to convergent we are getting the mineralization of that means same type of mineralization we are getting. So, that is why mineral system is not diagnostic, but if you are taking the assemblage that may be the diagnostics. So, therefore, steep temperature decrease, water rock reaction that means depressurization and fluid mixing are the major causes of mineralization that we are talking few minutes back that is the geochemistry. So, this geochemistry is playing major role in mineralization and that geochemistry that is dependent upon this temperature pressure condition. And this temperature pressure condition that depends upon tectonic environment. And tectonic environment that depends upon this the convergent divergent system that is plate movement. So, that means you see how directly or indirectly our mineral system, our national wealth that means wealth building system, how it is governed by the plate tectonic system. And depending upon this reactive rock, water rock reaction can increase the pH that means with carbonates and desulphide with a free rich rock and reduce with a free or reduced C rich rocks or ore fluids that is that is mechanism which can cause mineral deposits. So, every mechanism listed here they are related to geochemistry change in geochemical behavior. So, this contrast with the later stages of this divergent tectonometallogenic system which is amagmatic and therefore characterized by low heat that is less than 200 degrees Celsius produce oxidized H2S4 low temperature fluid promoting cell hosted copper and cobalt unconfirmed uranium siliciclastic carbonate and ZN PB deposit. So, that means if you see we have a divergent system where that is low temperature system is there. We have a convergent system, we have a high temperature system is there, but either it is convergent or divergent system that is irrespective of that tectonic setting the geochemistry is playing the role, key role. For example, if you see here at this low temperature system here this system that means this uh, copper sulphide and copper this whatever is there that is precipitating here. At high temperature system, this system is precipitating there. And similarly, there is a that means oxidized system to that means reducing system once we are going at this stage, we are getting this uh, uranium mineralization system is there. So, that means everywhere this is the play of geochemistry in this tectonic environments. And the most effective way of depositing metals from such fluids is the provision of H2S. So, this is very much important. For metallogenesis, we need the sulphur present should be there. So, either through sulphate reduction or interaction with local H2S resource, any of this region may be, but we need sulphur for sulphide mineralization. And the sulphur may be of any source, maybe it is organic source, maybe from rock source, maybe from fluid source, maybe from magmatic source. May, may be the change of this magmatic fluids characteristics. Mineral deposits are the result of nested processes that can occur over periods of millions to thousands of million years. It is not one day process. So, through 
मल्टीपुल जिओकेमिकल एनरिचमेंट इवेंट मल्टीपुल जिओकेमिकल एनरिचमेंट इवेंट सो दैट मीन्स यू सी हाउ जिओकेमिस्ट्री इज प्लेइंग द रोल सो इट इज प्रड्यूस्ड एनरिस्ड सोर्स ऑफ रेजेंस एंड द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ क्रस्टल आर्किटेक्चर दैट इज लेटर यूज टू मिनरलाइजिंग फ्लूड टू गेट रिजल्ट सो दैट मीन्स वी शुड हैव ए प्रॉपर रूम फॉर अलाउिंग दिस जिओकेमिस्ट्री द चेंज ऑफ जिओ दिस फ्लूड्स दैट टू बी एकोमोडेटेड दे आर फॉर एग्जाम्पल Subduction is not only directly responsible for the formation of many porphyry copper deposit as the melt that form these deposits are subduction related so devolatilization of the subducting slab also enriches the mantle in volatiles and slab roll back causes the extension of the over this overriding plate both of these later processes can have important ramification in later metallurgic system so that means not only shift convergent divergent is related this this volatile emplacement the geochemistry change these are very much important rather than convergent divergent system formation of iocg deposits may have involved in the melting of the mantle that was fertilized by a devolatilization of the subducted slabs during prior period of subduction that we have discussed earlier also moreover it is likely that extension related subduction produces the structural architecture utilized by the seen volcanic mineral systems that is vms and later biogenic system it is reactivated so this crustal scale that is uh, the discontinuities which was formed at the earlier stage of orogenesis may be reactivated later stages and giving rise the pathway the for mineralization system hence chemical and structural architecture may develop before the metallogenic event and can create favorable condition for development of fluids and melt critical to metallogenesis and can also channel the compartmentalized fluid flow so these are the processes how this metallogenic system are related and some facts most easily discovered deposits have largely been found and future discovery will increasingly be made poorly exposed and under cover terrains why so we are discussing why are more emphasizing on this geochemistry on this uh, plate tectonic setting because easy to find deposits has already we have exhausted so now we have to find out those deposits which are hidden based on this concept otherwise we have the concept which type of environment what should be the temperature pressure the gooey rise which type of mineralization where the minerals will be found that depends upon the concept rather searching here and there so that's why now the days the concept based mineralization or the concept based mineral exploration is the need of the hour so that's why understanding the tectonics the tectonic setting and their mineral that means potential at tectonic setting starting from this tectonic boundary to intraplate systems that is very much important so that's why convention exploration techniques will become less effective and new exploration method based on concept will be required so this is the use of this plate tectonics why we are going for this we why we are emphasizing on that so analysis of the link between the evolution of the tectonic system and metallogenic suggest that the understanding of the tectonic setting can be used to predict characteristics of mineralization in a poorly known terrain so it is not explored at all what the concept you have there that means where this mineralization will be there if you are talking about a convergent system which type of mineralization will be there what extent the mineralization can go so that depends upon the plate tectonics concept this geochemistry concept otherwise we are not going to uh, discover any new mineralized field in this world the concept of tectonically linked mineral deposit association can be used to predict unknown style of mineralization in a known mineral province and if needed major mineral deposits are products of protributions of tectonometallogenic systems documentation of such protributions and their spatial and temporal effect could assist the development of regional exploration models and especially target the mineral deposit so based on our finding based on this tectonic system we have to develop a model so based on this model we have to go for mineralization that means we have to develop a conceptual model 
based on the tectonic setting, based on the temperature pressure, based on the geochemistry and based on that model we have to search for which type of mineral we are searching for. So, if a mineral is not available at a particular tectonic environment, but we are searching it that means we are just putting our time in van nothing else. So, that is why concept based mineralization is the need of our concept based mineral exploration is the need of our rather searching here and there. So, that is why tectonic understanding can be gained either from this better exposed terrain along the strike or some cases regional or national scale geochemical isotope and geophysical and geochronological data sets. So, now every third for Indian context everything is there. We have rock record every inch of Indian subcontinent we have rock record. We have 1 is to 50,000 geological map. Now, we have NGCF national geochemical mapping program that means every topposite we have geochemical data we have. Now, we have to just uh, match those we have to overlap those which rock, which element, which type of tectonic setting that means st structural data, lithological data, geochemical data, geophysical data we have to converge them together. So, once we are converging that means we are coming to uh, tectonic model and based on the tectonic model we have to go for exploration. So, we can predict from the laboratory itself from that model that whether a particular mineral X is available here at a, or the suitability of getting this mineral X is here or not depending upon the tectonic model. So, thank you very much we will meet in the next class.